Hey, we're in Revelation chapter 19. This is it. Beautiful portion of scripture. Uh, I can't just read one verse here of this. I need to read um, a couple of verses and you'll love this anyway. All right. We could just read this and say amen today. But the Bible says in verse 11 of chapter 19, now I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Man, wow. You know, I feel like some huge uh, symphonic orchestration needs to play at that point because it's just such a powerful moment, you know, to think about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And remember, we talked about this. The rapture is Jesus coming for his people. The second coming of Christ is Jesus Christ coming with his people. So, so it is, it's, it's my view as I read the scriptures, my conviction that the church, except for tribulation saints, will have been gathered in heaven for seven years at this point in time. Then right at the end of the seven year tri tribulation period will be the marriage, the preparation for the marriage supper of the lamb. Uh, but what will precede that is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, Christ will, will be leading his armies. He'll be riding on a white horse. I don't think this is figurative. I think that, I think that this is literal. I mean, we'll find out. Um, and then we'll be with him, riding on white horses or riding on horses as well. And as we come to, it's, it's going to be a long ride when you think about where the third heaven is all the way to planet Earth is about 50 billion light years. So... I don't know how long, long it's going to take or how fast the horses are, but we're going to end up at the Valley of Armageddon, the Valley of Jezreel, where all of the nations of the earth will have been gathered together. And there's the great war, uh, the war of the Battle of Armageddon. And in that moment, as we come back with Christ, all of the armies that are gathered there will make an effort to destroy Jesus and the the, the word of the Lord, like a sword, is going to go out of his mouth and is going to conquer, is going to vanquish all of those armies in that valley. If you've been there with me, you know the Valley of Jezreel is a huge and beautiful valley. It runs uh, northwest to southeast. And the Bible says that the blood from that battle is going to be up to the horse's bridle. So. It is going to be total uh, and complete destruction, total victory by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, after he conquers all of the armies of the nations, he is going to go to Jerusalem and he's going to set himself up as uh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's going to rule over the earth, the Bible says, with a rod of iron. Um, it's an amazing picture and it is just a, a, a good reminder, listen, that we know how the story ends, right? We know how the story ends. Uh, we like Marvel movies. And so I just, I had this picture in my mind, forgive me for it, but you know the, the um, Infinity Wars, at the end of Infinity Wars when, you know, they're at Wakanda and they're getting pretty much wiped out by, you know, Thanos' army. If you've seen the movie, you know Thor's coming, right? And Thor comes and he just like, he just handles it. He handles it. And, and if you've seen the movie, you know, you know how it ends. So you're not stressed out. You're not worried because, because when it's all said and done, you know, Thor's going to come with, you know, his new weapon. And horrible illustration, but I think that you get the point. Like we know how the story ends. He's victorious. He's victorious. Listen, I want to encourage you today. Stop living as if Christ doesn't win in the end. Stop living a, a conquered life. Stop living under the banner of failure. Stop living uh, in a way where you're allowing your struggles to define who you are. That doesn't define who you are. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The Bible says we always have the victory in Christ. There are battles, there are skirmishes in this life, but at the end, we know that Jesus wins the war. And that same power is at work within your life, Paul said, that raised Jesus from the dead. I pray today that you access that power, 
that you walk in it, that he supplies the strength that you need. You may not be fighting Armageddon right now, but look, you might have a mini Armageddon in your life. It might be sin, it might be conflict, it might be persecution, whatever it is. He is sufficient to supply you with what you need to win the victory Eat over your feelings, over the bondage of your thoughts. He can give it to you right now. Receive that by faith and walk in it in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Lord, for how we know the story ends and, and help us help us to walk in the victory that you've provided through the cross and the resurrection. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Have a great day.